Greetings everyone, hello and welcome back once more to Sleepy Hollow in Manalord's Early Access and yeah, our town is growing nicely so far and in this episode, boy, we're going to have quite a lot of things on our agenda. The first one is of course, we're finishing right now the upgrading of the last plot to level 2, um, upgrade of my burgages and with that we'll reach then the next city level, that is the large village. And also, we are having winter upon us. It's October, so it's getting colder. We can already see this on the trees. Snow is upon us soon. And with that, yeah, well, a bit of hardship for my settlement. But we should be well prepared as firewood is in. And berries, at least, will hopefully survive us through winter together with some eggs. And yeah, also new honey. That is something. Berries and honey. Mm, I guess it might taste tasty, but we'll just see. Uh, one more plank that's already coming in. Perfect. The cool thing about planks is they're lighter. That means that I don't need an oxen all the time to transport it, right? So villagers can carry that as well. Logs, however, can only be carried or, yeah, drawn by, by the oxen. That's the, the main difference here. So lighter building material also is very detailed, I think. The apiary is finished. There you go. And also the upgrade is finished. And with that, we are now a large village. The next level would be a small town then. Burgage level 3, we need to have at least 3 and that's going to take quite some time now. So we can enjoy this settlement level with honey. Let's actually assign someone to this right away that we can start the production of this new food type and they will then deliver that to the food stall where there is yeah, some bread, berries, eggs and meat in at this moment. One thing that we actually need is more space again to live in, so we can continue onwards with some more burgages uh, that we have then probably somewhere over here situated. Um, there is a road here, I would like to continue most likely with this road then to the main road as well, down here, to the to this crossroad here then, and that means we have then a bit of space for more burgages here. Does it not snap here? There it is. So we can actually place them like this. We could also place them like this. I think we're going ahead with this one for now. Another four. Since one APR is not going to be enough and the game even states that two per region are totally fine, I would like to have a second one right away. We can have this one just beside the other one as well. Getting pretty dark now. And a bit rainy as well. And there it is. The game warns us now. Winter is approaching. It's the end of October. And the first year is coming to an end soon. It's getting really nasty out there. Uh, we're about to finish the next apiary. And yeah, as promised, I would like to start now with some farming. Uh, to be more precise, with some birding. Because right now we have one more problem. And that's because my hunter's not working fully anymore, right? We are at the cap here of my wildlife. Um, what we need to do is I need to provide some new way of getting clothing in. And that would be wool. And that is, of course, sheeps. Now for sheeps, we do need a livestock trading post. And we need the sheep farm itself. Because sheeps just don't appear like that, right? We need to start with a basic um, sheep farm. And we need to import then some sheep. Let's actually start. And yeah, for the farming area, I would like to designate this area here. First of all, we have lots of space here. It's very hard to see right now because the weather is so bad. But I guess we can still make it. Um, we have this area. And also, we can check it out uh, farming-wise. We have a nice fertility here, right? It's high to medium fertility, which is just fine. And we have then all different kind of crops, like barley as well. Very good fertility. Flax we have. Emma we have and dry we have full right so this will be a nice area for this and we're starting this farming area with a sheep farm probably a bit further outside somewhere here so we still have room for a few more plots then as well that we can have right there you go this is going to be the first sheep farm now at the same time i would also like to move my woodcutter lodge i'm relocating this one a bit further over here because I would like to make room for a granary as well that we're going to need in this area as well at some point. And, of course, we do need to have the livestock trading post. Let's have this one actually by the main road where there are the traders, right? So we have the space here. And the traders can then just pass by and give us the sheep if they have it available.
Lots of construction. Stocks are damaged by weather a bit. Some supplies, that is. That's just something I have to live with for the moment. The next Burgish pots are finished. Very good. So new people can then move in. We have a plus two now. So two more Burgishes that we can live with. And yeah, approval rating is close to 70%. Clothing market supply is actually giving me a nice boost. The church level and some food right here. I think honey is now coming in. There it is. The first honey is in as well. Also from afar, the village just looks fantastic. I love the lighting in this game. Very dynamic overall. There's a whole lot of new mechanics being introduced now with uh, the large village level. That is also diseases. In this case here, some people get sick now, also in winter. They are going to stay home and will not work then. And this is, of course, reducing the overall productivity of my settlement. And in this case here, oh boy, look at that. We can go look pretty far into this house there. And that means that we probably should upgrade them by forage here to herb garden once we have enough coin again so that it can also grow herbs and herbs are being used as medicine then of course. Another thing is that requirements are not met with this one here and that also means that the public order is going down. Public order is a new mechanic now. We need administrative buildings in order to increase this. A negative 10% is not so bad yet. So 90% should be fine for us, our survival. It should probably not drop below 50%. Otherwise, we're going to have some unrest here. Another cool detail I love is that the gardens of these houses here do not remove the trees, right? So you still keep those trees in the gardens of the houses as long as you're not building anything over there. I love this because it doesn't mean that we need to get rid of all the trees just by building and expanding our village. All right, at this point, also my livestock trading post is up and running. I would like to add another one right away since we have enough timber and that is the normal trading post as well. Enables trading with visiting traveling merchants, trade points and trading posts in other regions. The regional wealth is, is the currency used for trading, right? So let's just go ahead and have this one right next to my uh, to my yeah animal farming here let's have it on the other side just like that pretty big construction there as well going to take a while and there it is also our sheep farm in all its glory eh, a bit empty right now no sheep no people <laughs> nothing here um because yeah of course we don't have any animals yet uh for this we need to import sheep. Now let's go back to my trading post here for the animals. And as I can see, in order to start importing some sheep, we do need 30 regional wealth. We're 20. Uh, so I've already calculated this waiting time in a bit, right? This is where the sheep farm is in. And let's actually start importing sheep up to one. Now, what we need here is we don't need more than that usually, I think, because we can do something else now. In my development tree, I have the sheep breeding. Sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply. This is actually pretty important and it will save us a lot of money as well down the road. So I think we're going with this one here as my next development point. And with that, we'll get more sheep than out of just one or two. And we don't need to endlessly import sheep there all the time. This one is coming along. We actually have three unassigned families right now. And as you can see, with the amount of people coming in now, we consume more, right? So fuel consumption is actually increased with this, with more burgages. So I might actually also consider then adding more people to my woodcutter lodge. This one is finished now. And I would like to add the work area now to this area here, which is going to be my new forester area. And as we can see also, winter is creeping in, not at once, but steadily and slowly more white appears. It's December at this point. Finally, also the trading post has been finished 
and this one here we can use now right away for some proper trading let's actually assign one family to this and trading now for trading we have a couple of things to to consider first of all we cannot just endlessly trade any kind of resource all of these resources here require a trade route right we need to establish this one first for an upfront cost there is also some basic trade routes here like stone and planks for example that are very cheap so i would like to start with them let's just check it out we have 56 planks planks are actually worth two coin and we have 66 stone um, in high quantity too so it is worth to activate those trade rods here. I would like to start with planks because planks is also something we can get infinitely as opposed to stone, which is ending at some point, right? So let's establish our first trade rod here with the planks. And let's export planks to a desired minimum of, let's go with 35. So we can start exporting this one now. Now the trader of this camp here will now get those resources. Planks don't need an oxen really for transportation, so they can do it themselves as well. This is important as well to note. And I just love how they actually also take over equipment for their profession. So he's looking like a proper trader. Actually, he's looking more like a wanderer, but I guess he needs a lot of supplies with him all the time. And Heinz is now going to take planks, get them to the trading post, and whenever there is a trader then passing by through the village here on these trade routes, he will then hopefully purchase some planks, speeding up our regional wealth. Meanwhile, approval rating is past 70% thanks to some food variety, also the clothing market. Um, not enough fuel on the market right now is a problem, but there should be. Check it out quickly. My fuel market. There it is, right? Firewood stall. It's 60%. Firewood is in, so hopefully this still provides them for my people. 50, 59. I think it is because we moved the woodcutter lodge, right? Which is never really a good thing. Now, I do have some room, though, that I need again. So let's continue with the growing of some more um, burgages. And yeah, in this area, we do have some space. That we can use for at least four more with a bit of room behind them. Probably not enough room. We can actually it right to this one here as well there you go and let's also have some single houses somewhere for those of you who like to live a bit more alone there we have one i can squeeze in and also closer to the sheep farm we could have another one somewhere here By now, we have 18 planks in the trading post. Let's just hope that there's a trader passes by. This is looking like one. Oh, it's Heinz. No, this was a trader. 20 coin we get out of this. There's another trader coming along. Purchasing more planks. So almost all the planks have been purchased by now. Very nice. And with that, we have a regional wealth of 51 again. So this is then enough already to import us some sheep. I would like to actually import two. And that's it then. Right After those two, we don't need more. And it looks like a very crispy winter day. Sunny at least, but cold. There's no berries at this point to harvest. So for winter, we could actually micromanagement a bit and remove... No, actually, we cannot do this. You know why? Because then we would lose the food stall, right? Because the food stall also needs to be staffed. And that's usually a family that is producing food. So I cannot get rid of the forager for now for winter. Because then no one would actually staff the food stall. So at this point, we're getting in some money from exporting and also, of course, from taxes, thanks to our population. There is another taxation system that we are going to introduce way later. But for now, this is all we have to do. And yeah, it's actually enough to provide almost two sheep now. I think we need to assign someone to the livestock trading post. Otherwise, there's no, no trader coming in. Since just a new family moved in, we have 12 level 1 families. We can assign someone. There always should be one unassigned that is doing then just general work, like transportation of stuff, right? Using the oxen to transport logs around. And also for basic construction. And winter, of course, is also extremely beautiful.
And so it happened that we also imported the first sheep. Hooray! And this sheep will now be transported then to the sheep farm. End line. It's cold. Looks rather intimidated, but I think it's going to have a great life here. And a little bit later, there's the sheep, and there's the sheep herder, Jacob. He's coming in now, and herding the sheep. I'm going to import a second one, we just need one more regional well, so that would be another month passing by for the taxes, or we can sell something. We're also at 79 approval rating right now, this leads to a high population growth. Um, in this case, food is those dwindling. We have enough variety right now, thanks to eggs, honey and berries, but of course it's dwindling a bit, right, so as we can see this. We're down to three months of fuel at least, okay, fuel I thought would not be the big problem. We might need to consider assigning a second person to the woodcutter lodge soon. Because we just have so many burgages here that we need to, yeah, heat during winter. Of course, also the consumption of firewood is higher in winter. Still, it's February already, so I think we should comfortably last until May at least. There's 35 wealth, so we should actually be getting a second ship in now anytime. And then we can stop with the trading for this. Also, work areas are empty. The logging camp here is out of trees. Yep, that was this area here that we used for... That we are using for expansion soon. So I need to move my logging camp now too. And let's just see where we could have a new area. Probably over here a bit. And we might also consider a forester soon. Because we need to regrow those trees. So let's just hope there's a few more families moving in. This one has been finished now too. Perfect. And Endline, she's actually out there again, going out, importing us another sheep. She needs to travel all the way to this trade point, right? And there she gets the sheep from, that we can then purchase. All right, a new message. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Prepare for the attack. Track their movement. The new objective. Raiders nearby in one year. Another ruler's army was sighted as well. Oh, look at that. All right. Mercenary infantry, that is. I wonder what they're doing here. Hopefully not conquering me or anything like that. They're actually also not that far away. We do have my own army that I can create at this point. Not entirely sure that I want that though. But we would have the materials for that. A militia footman. Spear militia. This is something we can do because we have spear. Spears available. Whole arm militia. And archers. And the male villagers will be evenly distributed between all militia units. They will then try to find the required equipment. And yeah, after bringing it in, the units recruits are marked and ready to rally. And with that, we have the Spear Militia activated. We're not rallying them yet, right? They're just going to get the equipment that we should have in the storehouse. 20 Spear, 20 Large Shield. And as we can see, they're all getting their, their weapons now, getting them home. And once I rally them, they will then come together. And since we have some shields... Oh, I think the spear units are using the shields anyway, right? We will also have the militia footmen. These don't need weapons. They fight with axes. Yeah, firewood continues to dwindle. I'm really worried about that at this point. We have three months left. I mean, it's March, so the consumption should be reduced anyway. By the way, of course, with March, winter is over. Goodbye snow. And a new berry harvesting season is also upon us. We just lasted with the berries by the way. And have also quite a bit of honey in the stockyard. So now we should see this here. There's 13 honey actually stored. Some eggs, berries and still bread. It's a bit old at this point. There's also a second food store being introduced here. Because the demand is just high and we have enough production there. With some eggs and honey in it as well. 
The clothing stole has 20 ladder. The thing is, you don't see this here, right? In my current storage, there is no ladder being stored. But in the stoles themselves, it is. So people actually have it available. We can change this one here to the surplus or to the total goods stored. And here we can see that we have 20 ladder in. So there's two types of, of display. All right. I think the sheep is in. Yep. Girl horse and Enlen both are in here and waiting. And with that, we can actually stop the livestock trading now. I can reassign this person then. And the trading post still sells some planks occasionally down to 35 planks, right? This is an endless resource, so I would like to continue with the selling of it. The price does not fluctuate as far as I see, right? So it's always the same price. So always two for one plank, leading to another steady income then on the regional wealth. And there is my sheep. They should multiply, uh, uh, mul multiply after a while, thanks to the pork that we have. And one family is working them right now. This will then lead to some wool that we can then use for some additional clothing, which we're going to need for the level 3 burgages. We could also check where the army is right now. Over here. It's quite a lot of them. I wonder where they're really going. Still quite a distance to us. And just you look at the amount of food we have right now, thanks to the honey and the berries. Perfect. So food is really not a big deal. Even though consumption is high, so farming could also think about that at some point soon. Another thing I wanted to start with the new season, with the new, well, year, is the granary. A new stock area that we can have. And that's the granary. For two logs and ten stone we can build it. And I would like to have it a bit further over here. So closer than to my general farming area that we're going to have. Because we're going to need quite a bit of that anyway. So somewhere over here we can then have the granary. There are still the supplies being stored here. We could also get rid of them first and have it here. Which would be my preferred location. So let's actually assign someone to the storehouse. Who will then get those resources for us. Right. And then we can build the granary here. I should still have homes too, right? Yes, I still have two more burgages empty for some additional growth. So far, so good. A new year. Year two is upon us. We have survived the first winter. Raiders are roaming around now. And yeah, sheep farming has started. Onwards to new adventures with Sleepy Hollow. Stay tuned in Manor Lords.